All right, now let's cover the extension of glancing solute. Extensions in general are really just combination of several techniques all packed into one really long technique, right? But they're never meant to be used from beginning to end when we react to an opponent. Every part of an extension is for a very specific position of your opponent in a very specific situation. Uh, and every part deals with a reaction from the opponent. And also every part of an extension is about starting in a different position. So really we can say that an extension is a collection of several short techniques. The goal in Kempo is never to hit the opponent with 10 different strikes in a street situation, right? Our goal in Kempo instead is to choose the best strike at a time in each one of those situations that we find ourselves in. So in the extension, that's the same, that doesn't change. So the first thing the extension of Glancing Salute teaches us is what to do after the last move in the base technique. That applies to all extensions. So from the right inward elbow to his head, together with the left check against his right arm. And if you were able, you should also be checking or maybe even buckling your opponent's right leg here. That's where the base technique finished. So the first part of the extension starts from that exact position, right? And so if you look at the fingers of our left hand, they're pointing to our right during that check that we're doing on our opponent, right? And that means we can, from that position, we can now use an inward horizontal heel palm claw with our left hand. But because the hand position during the previous position, we will now torque our left forearm counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Our left forearm already turned clockwise almost as far as it will go when we were doing the left check. So since we cannot torque the arm any further clockwise, what we're going to do is we're going to torque it counterclockwise. That's the whole point of the inward horizontal heel palm claw. So our left arm will torque counterclockwise to take full advantage of its starting position. And that's very different from a standard inward palm claw like we have in obscure claws with our left hand, for example. The left inward palm, or palm claw, I should say, in obscure claws, has our left forearm torquing clockwise. While in glancing salute, the inward horizontal palm claw has us torquing our left forearm counterclockwise. Now, as soon as the left hand does that, we're going to strike with the right downward diagonal heel palm to his sternum. And we're doing both of those strikes, the left inward horizontal heel palm claw, as well as this right downward diagonal heel palm. We're doing both of them during a left rear crossover maneuver. And this then puts us in the great position to use a right reverse bow stance. So we can now do two things here. We're going to buckle his left leg with our right leg, but we're also going to execute a right heel palm to his groin. Since our right hand was already in anyhow, we simply strike with it again. But we need to turn our body a little bit here to make a proper strike, with, to make sure that we have a proper strike that has sufficient power. So now that we're at this point with the reverse bow and buckling our opponent's left leg and doing a palm strike to the groin, we actually should compare this next portion to another self-defense technique which has an almost identical position and that would be entwined maces on second degree brown belt in the Kempo system. Uh, both techniques end up in a reverse bow with the right hand striking to the groin. One does a palm, one does a hammer fist. Um, but the major difference here is that in entwined maces, which is the technique that was against two punches and we got here differently, but we nevertheless end up virtually in the same position. Nevertheless, entwined maces has one major difference here and that is that we are ending up most likely on the outside of our opponent's left arm in entwined maces. While here in the glancing salute extension, we are ending up on the inside of the left arm. And the reason why that is significant is because it is now going to uh, prompt us to do a different follow-up after that strike to the groin. So here in entwined maces, you see we are going to execute a right back knuckle to the face and then a left heel palm to usually the sternum and then a left knee strike to the groin. But we have to do the back knuckle in a completely different fashion here than what we would do in glancing salute. Here in glancing salute, we're also going to choose a back knuckle, but a completely different type of back knuckle. So because we're on the inside of the arm, 
we are able to now do what is usually referred to as a over the shoulder back knuckle even though we might not even get over <laughs> or above our shoulder because our opponent is dropping right into the strike which is just another confirmation that this is a good strike to use because look how fast we are able to do this but here in the extension of glancing salute we should notice that because we are on the inside of the left arm our left hand is able to actually grab behind our opponent's neck as soon as we hit him in the groin so we are able to then control our opponent's height we can basically keep on pulling him down and we are able to pull him into that right back knuckle that's going to be going to his face and obviously that means we're going to hit him harder and it means we're pulling him into the strike which is usually referred to as borrowing force and once we do that strike to the face there's a very high probability that our opponent's arms are going to come back up when you, when you buckle your opponent's legs and he thinks he's falling, a lot of times uh, the opponent will extend the arms or drop them downward in anticipation of falling to the ground. But when you're hitting him in the face, those arms come back up towards the face, either in an attempt to block us or just following the pain. Right? It's not likely that somebody will drop their hands when you hit them in the face. They're going to raise their arm. So we're going to expect the resistance on that right arm of his, and we're going to use our right hand to check his arm and we're also going to do a left eye hook and we're going to execute a right knee strike as our major move right here because our hands are literally helping us get into this position and they are helping us to execute this knee strike more forcefully. And that of course is going to make us end up in a right front twist stance. And then all we got left to do here is we're going to do a right back knuckle to our opponent's face because again is the highest probability of success it is going to be extremely difficult for our opponent to block this right outward back knuckle right uh, what we have to be conscious of here however is that we are going to use what is usually referred to in Kempo as impact adjustment meaning that we're going to strike prior to even stepping out to our neutral bow stance which will be our last stance in this extension. And the reason why we're hitting prior is because we're going to use the force of the impact to push ourselves into this final stance. So the timing is very uh, significant here that the strike, the back knuckle strike, needs to be executed prior to stepping out completely into this right neutral bow stance. We would not want to move away from our strike while we are making contact. And that brings us to the end of the Glancing Salute extension, and with that, the end of this lesson. Thank you for watching.